<laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. It's good to see everybody here this morning. Glad you're having a good time visiting. <laughs> oh, what? Oh. <laughs> Come on in! <laughs> You've lost control. <laughs> Never had it. <laughs> Morning, guys. It's a beautiful day to praise our Heavenly Father and celebrate many blessings our church is experiencing. Our call to worship is immortal, invisible, God only wise on page 103 in your hymnal. Please stand and you're not going to sing with me because I can't sing today. You're on your own. <laughs> Immortal, invisible, God only wise, in light inaccessible, hid from our eyes, our blessed, most glorious, so ancient of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise, unresting, unhasting, and silent as light, nor wanting, nor now rulest in might, thy justice like mountains high, soaring above, thy clouds which 
which are fountains of goodness and love. To all life thou givest, to both great and small, in all life thou livest, the true life of all. We blossom and flourish as leaves on the tree, and wither and perish, but not change as thee. Thou reignest in glory, thou dwellest in light, thine angels adore thee, all veiling their sight. All love we would render, oh help us to see, that only the splendor of light hideth thee. You may be seated. Good morning and welcome to First Methodist Church of Sweeney. I'm Sherry, in case you don't know me. I think most of you do by now. I'm your worship host this morning and I'm happy to see you today. If you're joining us online, if you would just make a comment so we know you're here. And if you have any questions, just let us know. If you have any prayers for later, make a comment regard to that and they'll get with us. If you're sitting out here, grab one of the black sign-in sheets and put it in the offertory later. Welcome to fall weather. Amen. Yeah, you know. <laughs> hey, it's supposed to be fall. <laughs> All right. Birth I'm going to kind of skip around today. Our birthdays today. We have a special one coming up. Our pastor has a birthday on Ooh. Thursday on the 26th along with Jessica Gregory on the 26th, Zane Van Avery on the 25th, and Johnny Scarborough on the 25th. So I think we need to do birthdays first. If you'll stand, we can sing happy birthday. Yeah, here we go. That means you, Zane. <laughs> Can't hide. <laughs> Some of the announcements we have today, um, our Board of Stewards meeting will be at 3 p.m. Our fifth Sunday potluck will be next Sunday, October 29th. We still are in need of auction and raffle items for the chicken spaghetti dinner, which is coming up two weeks. We're getting ready. Um, we're still collecting things, so we, we've had some pretty good offerings. It's going to look good this year. There is. That's okay. Uh, chicken spaghetti dinner tickets are still available at the office. Marty will be back in the office tomorrow. Um, the Catholic Church today is having their turkey dinner in Bazaar. So go on over after church, have dinner, support them. They'll be supporting us. Uh, let me see. We're still collecting can in Brazoria. In Brazoria. Knights of Columbus Hall. We're still collecting cans for My Heart's Appeal. And um, just as an update, we are now serving over 700 kids a week for Backpack Buddies in Southern Brazoria County, not including Freeport. They had their own separate program. Um, donations are being asked for Christmas gifts and bikes. So if you'd like to give, you can give through the church, and Casey can funnel it through for us. Are there any other announcements? Prayer? No, oh, prayers are late. Okay. All right, if you bow your head, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 
Millie Joe is home. Kelly? If we're doing prayers, uh, we still need to continue prayers for our friend Bill Houston. He's still in an induced coma from his valve bypass. He's doing a little bit better, but he needs lots of prayers. He's still touch and go. Any others? If you bow your head, please. Father God, we gather here today under your care and protection. Thank you for your loving kindness that never fails us. We thank you for those with us that you would guide our thoughts, our actions to bring to you glory. Strengthen us and fill us with your peace. Amen. If you'll stand for the opening hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. 64. <laughs> Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in be seated. My name is Joshua Bynum. I'm the pastor here, if anybody doesn't know me. Joys and concerns. 
Um, Y'all just mentioned um, Bill. Bill in Houston. Um, Bill in Houston, their friend in Houston that is in the uh, ICU, you said? Still in the ICU. Okay, so the, the Pettigrew's daughter is going to India for some medical uh, treatments. Um, also, I was handed a couple. Um, John Hanna um, went to the hospital Wednesday afternoon. Who gave this? Yeah. Um, and he's in the stroke unit at Herman. And then also Dennis Hill went to the hospital this morning with uh, high blood pressure and they're trying to get that blood pressure under control. And so as far as we know, he's still there. Any, yes? Uh -huh. Yeah, we're glad y'all are here worshiping with us. Yeah, Johnny. The family of Al Ringo, you said? Yes. Uh, he recently passed away. And uh, so if you all pray for his family. So, whichever one of you. <laughs> okay. I want to thank everybody for the prayers. Mike and I have had it for two weeks. We've yeah, we're, we're glad to see you back in church with us, Kayla. Mary Lee. <coughs> Jeanette Nelson. Jeanette Nelson. Yes. And done, Alice. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, he'll be with us soon. That's cool. Got to see a baby's heartbeat uh, for his daughter. So I guess your granddaughter's heartbeat. Uh, that's pretty cool. Let us go to God in prayer. God, we are here giving you all the cares that we have, all the, the people that we know that need your care. Um, give strength to those that need strength. We know you're a God that can carry all of our burdens. Um, give comfort to those who are in need of comfort. We know that you are the great comforter. You're the one who can um, can be that, that healing that, that we need. Um, uplift those that are down in spirit, those that need to be encouraged, help them to know that you're with them every step of the way. Um, be with each one of us. Help us as we are ministering the world. Help us to be that peace in the world. We, we live in a world that is chaotic, full of all kinds of mess, but you're the God that we look to. You're the God that um, provides comfort, that gives us that sustaining power. Help us to be your ministers in the world, to be that light in a, in a dark and dying world. Help us to, to continue to follow you every day of our lives. Amen. If the ushers would come forward for the offering. Let's pray together. God, it's all yours. What we give today, we know it's, it's but a symbol, it's a token, it's, it's not more than you've given to us. We, we could never be more generous than you have been, but help what we give today to bless your church, bless this community, bless the world with the peace that you give us. Amen.
Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus, vast unmeasure, boundless free. Will the mighty ocean in its fullness over me? Underneath me, all around me, in the current of your love, leading onward, leading homeward to your glorious rest above. Oh, the deep, deep love, all I need and trust is the deep, deep love of Jesus. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus, spread his praise from shore to shore. How he came to pay our ransom through the saving cross he bore. How he watches o'er his loved ones, those he died to make his own. How for them he's interceding, pleading now before the throne. Oh, the deep, deep love, all I need and trust is the deep, deep love of Jesus. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus, for surpassing all the rest. It's an ocean full of blessing in the midst of every test. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus, mighty Savior, precious friend. You will bring us home to glory where your love will never end. Oh, the deep, deep love, all I need and trust is the deep, deep love of Jesus. Oh, the deep, deep love, all I need and trust is the deep, deep love of Jesus. The deep love of Jesus. Praise God from whom things flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.
Not quite yet. There we go. Something's on. Whoops, something came on. Now you're on. Yeah. Yeah, you're on. Okay, if I hold the button. <laughs> uh. Today. My name is Sherry, and I'm glad to have you all here today. You want to hold that for a minute? I'm going to give each of you a coin, and if you would just put this in your hand and hold it until I tell you what to do with it, okay? Oh, just perfect. Pass that down. This one's yours. Today we're going to talk about honoring God, and it's coming from Matthew twenty-two seventeen. Has anyone ever asked you a question that there just wasn't any way to answer it without getting yourself into trouble? That's what we call a loaded question. <laughs> a loaded question is one that's worded so that a person cannot answer it without appearing to be guilty. Here's a couple examples. Have you quit cheating cards at, at cards? How do you answer that? If you answer yes, you're admitting that you cheat. If you answer no, then you're admitting that you still cheat. How about do you still pick on your little brother? That's another odd question, isn't it? You're either going to admit that you used to pick on your brother or that you're still picking on your brother, which in a lot of cases is still yes, right? <laughs> Sometimes a loaded question is trying to trick a person into saying something that will get him in trouble. Our Bible lesson today, examples of that. Jesus was getting great popularity among the Israelites. This was very upsetting to the religious leaders called the Pharisees. They thought he was a threat to their authority. So they tried everything they could think of to make Jesus look bad, and yet Jesus had more and more followers every day. So a group of Pharisees met and came up with a plot to trick Jesus into saying something that would discredit him against his followers, or with his followers. The people in Jesus' day were required to pay taxes to the Roman government. This was not very popular with the people. The plan was to go to Jesus and ask him his opinion about paying the taxes. So the Pharisees sent the followers with a few of Herod's followers mixed in and asked Jesus, Teacher, we know how honest you are. You teach the way of God truthfully. Now tell us what you think about this. Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? They were actually trying to trick Jesus because they knew if he said yes, the people would be angry. If he said no, he'd get in trouble with Roman authorities. Jesus saw right through their plan, and he did the wise thing. He asked them for a coin, and then he said, whose picture is on this coin? And they answered, it's Caesar. Caesar was the Roman ruler, and all taxes had to be paid to him. Jesus then said to them, give, it, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and give to God what belongs to God. Okay, go ahead and look at your coin. Can you tell me whose picture is on it? Mm -hmm. Do you know who that man is? Abraham Lincoln. He was one of our presidents. <clears throat> Excuse me. What does it say just above the picture, his picture? Can you read that? It's real tiny print. It says United States of America. Well, I guess that means that this picture belongs, or the coin belongs to the man whose picture is on it, right? She read the oh, well, we, in God we trust, either way. <laughs> but what about God? Jesus also said, give to God what belongs to God. The Bible says that we were created by God and that we were created in the image of God. If we are created by God, then we are created in his image. We must belong to him. This means that we must give ourselves to him. Okay, everybody stand up with their coin. On the count of three, carefully, 
flip your coin in the air and repeat with me. Give yourselves to God as you try to catch the coin. So toss it in the air and catch it and say, give ourselves to God. I can't hear you. You're really quiet on this one. <laughs> All right, you can sit down. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, help us give you what is yours. Help us send our hours, spend our hours in acts of love and our days in doing acts of kindness. May we always obey you and give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we ring the bell? Okay. Everybody grab the rope. I was uh, seeing quite a few dirty looks there in that uh, children's time as they were talking about what siblings do to each other. Um, some people were eyeing some other people. Our scripture today is from Matthew chapter 22, verse 15 through 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodian, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is on it? And whose title? They answered, the emperor's. Then he said to them, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. It's the word of God for the people of God. If y'all remember from last week, we were talking about the, the parable right before this, um, the the, the parable of the wedding banquet. And if you remember, the Pharisees realized um, that he was talking about them. They realized he's, he's starting to call them out on things. And they were getting tired of it, weren't they? They're, they're ready to uh, end it. So they, in this text, ally with the Herodians that you know, an enemy of my enemy is my friends, right? These are not groups that are normally together, which is why they're mentioned together. Um, you know, you, you think America with its two-party system is hard to govern. Israel at this time was a mess. There, there was all these groups and um, all these political groups, and they were more than willing to kill each other. So it was a, it was a hard area to govern. But here we are in Matthew, and things are starting to heat up. Jesus' time is near. The crucifixion is coming. He's starting to get more outspoken. He, he's ready to um, say what he needs to say. You know, if you remember in earlier parts of Matthew, he mentions he, he's trying to keep quiet. He's not ready to start riling up the, the leadership. So he's... Um, being a little bit more careful in what he says. But now that his time is near, he's starting to talk a lot more. And to make matters worse, he's doing things that all the people like. He's healing 
the lame. He, he's uh, healing blindness. He's, you know, th that really is making the chief priest mad. You know, he's doing this on a Sunday, or, you know, their, their Sunday, their Sabbath day, right? And they don't like that. So they ask him, whose authority are you doing these things? And this is when he launches into these parables, letting them know what he thinks about them. He, he's in these parables, um, and they realize he's talking about them. So here they are. They start with flattery. You're so smart and wise. You're going to tell us the answer to this question. Um, is my microphone cutting out? Yeah, I'm, I don't know what it is. Sometimes I can't hear myself because of the way the uh, the speakers are facing. So I'm <laughs> sometimes I'm not sure what what y'all are hearing. But they're flattering him, and the words are true. Because he is smart, he is wise, he, he is the one that can answer their question, but it's false, isn't it? They're, they're not doing this with good intention. This is, this is a siren song, isn't it? They're, they're trying to lure him into a trap and uh, get rid of him. So Jesus sees the trap. He knows what they're, about to, what they're trying to do. And he, because if he says, pay this tax, then the Jews are going to hate him for being a sellout to the Romans. And if he doesn't, if he tells them not to pay the tax, then they're going to call the Romans and tell them that he's advocating that they don't pay the tax and they should uh, arrest him for treason. Uh, I wanted to talk about a, a small detail that they don't, that a lot of people miss in this. Everybody remember their Ten Commandments? Yeah, some of y'all memorized them, hopefully, at some point. Do y'all remember the, the second one? In uh, Exodus chapter 20, you shall not make for yourself a graven image or any likeness of anything that is heaven, in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and the fourth generations of those who hate him. So everybody hear that? No graven images. The, the uh, Israelites have been commanded for this about this. So in 6 AD, when the Romans took over, they have their money, their faces on them. So pretty soon after that, there's a revolt because the, the Jews don't want to pay taxes using coins with somebody's face on them because they felt like that was breaking their religious vows. They, they, that was breaking one of the Ten Commandments and they didn't want to do it. So there was a revolt led by a Galilean named Judas, which now the, the, here in the Bible, here's another Galilean that they're asking this question to, Jesus. But the, the revolt was violently put down. It uh, was ended, but the Jews were allowed to mint coins, small copper coins, that didn't have an image on them. So they got, the, they got to mint special coins so that they you know, keep the peace, right? But the the larger coins still had Caesar's face on them. So for their everyday use, they had um, coins that they could use, but the larger coins still had the these graven images on them. Then in 26 AD, there was what's called the Affair of the Standards, where Pontius Pilate decides to send a, some soldiers, um, uh, troops to the to the Antonia fortress, which is right beside the Temple Mount. So he sends these troops there, and if you if you've ever seen pictures of Roman soldiers, they have the standards that go with them, you know, the, to show which unit they are in battle. And on the standard, there's an image of the emperor. They're they're taking his image with them into battle. Once again, the Jews were not happy about this. Right next to the temple, here are these Romans bringing graven image. Into, into the holy city. So a large group of Jewish men went to Caesarea. Um, if you remember, 
Pontius Pilate did not live in Jerusalem full time. He only came and visited. But so they go to the the capital city, and they they basically have a sit in. They go to the palace. They sit and in protest. And after about five days, Pontius Pilate gets tired of it. He has them surrounded by soldiers, and he tells them, basically, you know, y'all y'all are going to get over this right now. And they they just they lay down on the ground, put their necks out, and say, "You'll kill every one of us before we." will submit to this. So he decides, maybe, maybe I could work with him a little bit. So he, he has the, the standards removed with the, the emperor's uh, face on them. It, they, the Romans end up uh, caving to their demands. So here we are just a few years later. This hot, bit, hot topic that um, they're, they're trying to trick Jesus with. Uh, what, is, what does Jesus say in verse 18? Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? He's, he's not just asking for visual aid. He's seeing if they have one of these coins with a graven image of Caesar's face on it. And the, the silver coins had a graven image on it. So somebody quickly pulls out a coin with a graven image on it. And so Jesus is telling them, y'all have graven images here on the Temple Mount. Do y'all really care about this? Is this really an issue or are you trying to trap me? He, he knows what they're doing. Because the, the inscription on the coin says most likely said, Tiberius Caesar, August son of the divine Augustus, high priest. Y'all remember your first commandment? Have no other gods before me. Caesar claimed to be a god. You could go to a temple and worship Caesar. There were special um, temples for Caesar. So on every coin with his face on it was a claim of divinity. And here they are, with one of these coins in the holy place, in the temple. He's making this point that they're hypocrites. They don't care about following the Ten Commandments. They're just trying to trap him. Because um, Jesus doesn't care about money, right? He, he kind of gives it to him both ways. He, you know, what does money matter? Um, y'all ever heard the story about the, the man who God goes to him and says, you know, You've been so holy and devout that I'm going to, to give you a special uh, gift. When, when you get to heaven, when, when you die, I'll let you bring a suitcase, whatever you want to bring, to heaven. So this man says, okay, you know, this, this is going to be cool. So, you know, eventually he dies, comes to heaven. St. Peter meets him at the gate. And, you know, St. Peter says, I, I heard about this, this arrangement you had with God. What, I'm really curious what, what you brought in this suitcase. So the man very proudly pulls up his suitcase, opens it, just full of gold bars in the suitcase. St. Peter kind of looks at him confused and said, pavement? You know, the streets are lined with gold. What, what good is gold in heaven? Um, God knows, Jesus knows where every atom of gold is in this planet, right? He, he knows where it is, it, every atom of gold in the solar system is. He doesn't care about money, right? I mean, what, what's money to him? Um, you know, we, we're the ones that give it value. Um, you, you think about our money now, like, like uh, they talked about in children's time. You know, this is a one dollar bill, right? Everybody agrees this is a one dollar bill. This is a twenty dollar bill. If I offer you which one you want, which one is everybody gonna pick? <laughs> twenty, right? Everybody agrees. But they're made with the same paper. They feel the same. They're, they're the same size, I mean, really what's the difference, right? I mean, they're, they're both money, they're both bills, but 
we've given them different value, haven't we? we we've given them uh, different <laughs> value, yeah. Um, but it's only valuable because we say it is, right? You can buy money from collapsed governments that, I mean, it, it, you, you know, it's $2 for a million dollar note because what are you gonna do with it? it you put it on your wall and it's a conversation piece. It's not worth anything. So Jesus' answer, he does the both and. Give both to God and give to Caesar. And what is Caesar? You know, Christians have struggled with what, what to give to Caesar. Uh, the first few hundred years of Christianity, Christianity was illegal. People were dying for it. They, they were giving their lives. How, were, how could they follow the government, respect the government when the government was killing them, when they were uh, dying for their faith? You know, Christianity has been the state religion in a lot of places. Christendom has been around for a while. Christians now have gotten pretty used to political power, so it's not, um, it's hard for us to give to Caesar what Caesar and to God's with God, but that political power is waning in a lot of ways. The, the Christian worldview isn't the predominant one, and so now how do we live in a world that's not gonna do what we say all the time? It's not gonna follow our beliefs. Jesus asks whose image is stamped on the coin. And he said, give him back what's his. Give it back to him. He made it. He can keep it. But what's God's? The emperor can keep what is stamped with his face on it. But he says, God gets to keep what has him, his image stamped on it. And what has his image stamped on it Every one of us, we're all made in the image of God. We, we are his creation. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, as, as the Bible says. Each, each of us have been marked by our owner. We, we're all marked by our creator, God. And so Jesus is changing the question from a current hot-button political topic of the day into this broader theological point. He's making the point, we're all gods. You know, give, give Caesar his little trinkets, right? Give him, give him those little metal pieces he wants, but God gets every one of you. God gets your, uh, your heart, your soul. And it says, when they heard this, they were amazed and they left him. Because what else is there to say? <laughs> when Jesus makes that point, they couldn't really argue with him then. Uh, he, he's, he's totally changed the, the question. So what do we do today? If we're made in his image, how do we act like it? How do we live like uh, his children? If we're fearfully and wonderfully made, what do we do in our lives? Because Jesus doesn't divide the world into uh, different realms. It, we're here. So we need to be... Uh, loyal to Caesar, loyal to God, give everyone their due. Um, they try to trick him, don't they? They try to get him to walk into this lose-lose situation, and yet he totally walks around them. He, he defeats them. We're made in the image of God, aren't we? We're made in his image. And we should act like it. We, we need to, to be his children. So as, as his children, let's, let's pray that we, that we act like it every day. Let's pray together. God, we, we know we're made in your image. We know that you're God that, um, that made each one of us, that knows the very, head on, the very hair on our heads, and you call us closer to you every day. You call us to be your representatives in the world. We know that often we fall short of being your children. We, we don't make good represent, representatives of you, but every day you still call us to this life of faith, this life of ministry. We are 
we're here to serve you. Help us in that and help us to be uh, an accurate representation of you. Amen. Let's turn now to the time of communion together. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who truly love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, who dwell in charity with their neighbors and intend to live a holy life. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, making your humble confession to Almighty God. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, we confess and lament that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent because the remembrance of our sin is more than we can bear. Have mercy on us and forgive us. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, pardon us of all that is past and grant that we may ever serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In his great mercy, our almighty God and heavenly Father has promised forgiveness of, sin, of sins to all who repent and with true faith turn to him. May he have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear these comforting words that Jesus Christ, our Savior, says to all who truly turn to him. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give our thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and our joy to give thanks to you in all places and at all times, Almighty Father. You are the source of all truth, life, and love. You made us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When in our sinfulness we turned away from you and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you with the angels and archangels and all the company of heaven forever singing this hymn to the glory of your name. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All praise and glory is yours, O God our Father, for in your tender mercy you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to the world. Your spirit anointed him to bring good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to comfort those who mourn, to proclaim freedom for captives, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce the year of the Lord's favor. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
the body of our Lord Jesus Christ is broken for you. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ is shed for you. Let us pray. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs from under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. If those helping me with communion would come forward, please. Table is open.
Let us sing one last hymn together, hymn number 402, Lord, I Want to Be a Christian. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. now this benediction. You were made in the image of God. Go out from this place and act like it. <laughs> Go now in peace. Let's, let's circle up. Maybe come down there. <laughs> I forgot I was full.